US racing. Banstead Manor Stud, the hub of Khalid Adullah's Jubmont Farms breeding operation. It's possible the Prince's star filly midday will retire here, but before she starts thinking about getting the fellas frisky, the daughter of Oasis Dream has a date with destiny at the Breeders' Cup, bidding for back-to-back -back victories in the filly and mare turf. <laughs> Teddy, talk to us the importance of the Breeders' Cup for Jubmont Farms. You've had four winners. It, it took a little while to get off the mark. It, it's tough. It is tough. Um, and so, so the, the big championship races like uh, like the Breeders' Cup, they, they should be difficult to win. And, and, and it took us a while uh, to, to get into any kind of winning winning groove. Um, uh, not it wasn't it wasn't as easy as it, as we liked it would have liked it to be, but. I, th I think n now we, in terms of travelling the horses and 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 looking at the races and targeting the races, I, I think that's that we're more fo we've been more focused on that. Um, certainly from a European point of view, uh, Banks Hill obviously was the first, but we were looking at the Breeders' Cup quite a long way in advance, um, and likewise with Midday last year, uh, we were looking we were looking towards towards the Breeders' Cup. So I think that was an, a more important part of the st strategy, getting the horse there. I think as an individual owner, Prince Khalid has had more runners at the Breeders' Cup than any other single owner in their own name. Um, it's clearly a meeting he, he loves. Yeah, Prince Khalid has been a tremendous supporter of the Breeders' Cup from, from the onset. Um, and certainly he wants his horses to run in the best races. With Intercontinental catch and one for London to do it. Filmmaker on the outside third. Wend is now fourth. And Wonder again fifth on the outside. Coming down to the finish. And it is Intercontinental clear by two and a half. Ouija board and Filmmaker chasing her home. But it was a crafty ride by Rafael Bejarano who gets this front runner home. Banks Hill and Intercontinental, they were they were relations, weren't they? I mean they're the sisters. Sisters, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and you see that all the time, uh, the Abdullah breeding through and through. Yeah, I mean, the, the, both those two were out of Hasili, who's an exceptional brood mare, um, and and the basis, the whole basis of Judmont is, is the is the brood mares and, and and the families. And of course, Oasis Dream, the Tsar of midday, uh, finished tenth in the Breeders' Cup mile. Probably a year actually. You wished you'd run in the sprint. <laughs> um, I, 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 a lot of people ask me about that. Why did we go for the mile? Uh, the rarely we knew we all knew already that Oasis Dream was a good a, a good sprinter. Uh, we also we, he, we, it had been decided that he would come back to Banstead Manor and stand in England. So there was really little little to be gained from a commercial stallion's point of view as a as a, as a six furlong dirt sprinter. Um, and and so the mile would have would have added another dimension to his um, to his commercial. Um, uh, compatibility, I think, if that's the right word. But um, as, as it's turned out, we, he hasn't needed that, and he's become an exceptional sire even without running the Breeders' Cup. Mom. Tom, give us an idea of what it's like to ride in a Breeders' Cup. From a jockey's point of view, it's it's very special, in as far as that it's um, it's a great you know it's a great opportunity, and it's it's not everybody gets the chance to to operate in a big stage like that, so. I mean, when you're, when it comes, you know, when it all comes off, and you know, you get a winner out there, it's extra special. And talk about midday in the Emirates Airlines Breeders' Cup for Liam Mehta. Um, how did the race go for you on the day? Yeah, it went very well. Just got a nice position down the rail, and, and things opened up gradually. Although she hit a flat spot, she she rallied away, and you know, she was well on top when it mattered.
Let's talk about midday then. Has the Breeders' Cup been almost her target since she won last year? No, I think I think there was the the way the Phillies for a program, the older Phillies program is is laid out is 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 that it is part mainly the second half of the year that that the race is suitable for her came came up, and so Henry wanted to get her run into her at um, at York in the Middleton Stakes. It was probably a bit too soon. She had to give five pounds to Sariska. Um, it didn't. It, it it she she ran well, but. Um, she certainly wasn't on the top of her form and he gave her a bit of a, uh, a break and so she could get into the sort of get into the rhythm of the sort of Nassau Stakes and um, Yorkshire Oaks and then obviously the Prix um and of course the Breeders' Cup has been it's been really nicely spaced for her. She's going to be one of the shortest price favourites at the Breeders' Cup for the Phillies and Mare Turf. Um, she looks outstanding on form. Is there? A, could you argue that she's better this season? Has she, does Henry give you the impression she's strengthened up even further from three to four? I think she probably has. I, th I think her sort of performance in the Yorkshire Oaks really sort of stamped her there when she was meeting the sort of young ger younger generation and an exceptional filly in um, Snow Fairy. Um, so I, I think that she, she certainly has matured and, and, and done well. And she had those three Group 1 races which she won in, in a very short space of time, in seven weeks. Yeah? And she was never trained for the arc and, and I didn't really think it was the right race for her anyway. Um, but she seems to be coming back well and she's on course for the Breeders' Cup which has always been the idea. The Prince loves the Breeders' Cup and I always wanted to keep her as much as possible against her own sex. But to me she wasn't an arc filly. And, and, um, you know, the way I trained her and her races, I mean, um, she got slightly jarred up at um, uh, when she had her first run this year in the Middleton at York. On that fast ground, she got jarred up. It's taken a long time to come back. And I just sort of planned her races and sort of, uh, I've planned the Breeders' Cup. I mean, I haven't trained her for the Ark. So, I mean, it's all very well, you know, they're not machines. People saying, why isn't, can't she go for the Ark now? Well, she had three quick races, you know. Yeah. I think if she'd run in the Ark, she'd, be, she'd been slightly tired and flat. Um, I was going against what I was doing, so you know you can't do that. They're not machines. People think you can just pick them up and run them. You can't. You know? She's grown a little bit because she was on the smallish side. She's grown and she's big enough and she's thickened out and def definitely improved with age. I'm moving her up now you know, in preparation for it. You know? and I think I'm on, on schedule. Um, it'll suit her because you know that extra furlong. You know, last year at the mile and a quarter, was a little bit sharp for her and she hit that flat spot. I think with the extra furlong you can do things smoothly and hopefully we won't, have, we won't do that too. She's improved no end um, through this season and I'm, you know she goes there um, you know she goes there with a lot better chance probably this year than she, she did last year but I mean she, um, you know we weren't over bullish we, we, we ran her because she, we just thought you know she had a chance but this year it looked like she'd, she'd defend her crown hopefully. I mean, she's going to be a short price favourite and you look through the opposition and you're thinking to yourself, there's, there's not really much there if she performs and, and you perform on the night. Um, she should really win. Yeah, when you, when you look through the opposition, you can understand why, why she's the price that she is. But, I mean, it's, it's not just a case of being a short price favourite. You've got to get, get her there in one piece. You've, you hopefully get a nice draw, make sure she enjoys the trip over and, and have a nice have a nice run around the race. There's, there's a lot of things, you know, she's got to stay healthy, I've got to stay healthy and um, yeah, let's, let's hope that's the case. Do you feel riding her that she's better than last year? Yes. Stronger? Yeah, yeah. She's strengthened up a lot. Physically she's, there's more about her now, she's physically more imposing. Or, you know, she's strengthened up, she's more, sh bigger shoulders or hindquarters have strengthened and she's obviously, look at her form, she's improved no end as well. So. Yeah, she's she's done she's done well. And what about Churchill Downs? As a man who racks up the old air miles in your job, um, are you pleased this year's Breeders' Cup is at Churchill Downs? Does it hold any fears for you at midday? No, I don't think so. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty fair track, track Churchill. Um, uh, in terms of ground, I don't. I mean, you never know what it's going to be. I, I mean, she. We know she handles softish ground, soft ground, but she certainly doesn't want it sort of bottomless ground, which I doubt it would be. Um, so I, I don't. I don't think there's any great great worries about that. And your career, it's really taken off since Art Connoisseur won the Golden Jubilee. State. I think you've got ten Group Ones or Grade Ones in the space of two years, just about. Um, it's, it's, you've, you've gone right to the top 
in a very short space of time, really. Yeah, I have. I've done well enough, but you know, I mean, you have to have the ammunition to do it. And I've I've been very fortunate that you know Henry has given me the you know the ammunition to work with, and he's he's put faith in me. So it, it certainly makes my job easier. But. Do you love? Do you love? Well, I mean, obviously, you're not going to say no. Working with Henry Settle is the worst thing ever. Don't expect you to say that. But but is it good fun? Is is Henry a fascinating character to work with? He's he's, he's a nice he's a nice man. He's, you know, he, he can be fun in the mornings, and you know, he's he's quicker to crack a joke than most. And you know, that 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 does put you know it chills you out. And you know what I mean? He's you see some guys, you know, they're just. You know, they're uptight about everything, but he's he's not. You know, of course, he, you know he, he puts his great attention to detail. But you know, professionally, and you know, he's you know he's good. We're good friends, and that. So it's it's probably easier to, to work with a man like that. And before the race at Churchill, I mean, is he the kind of person who'll give you strict orders, or does he just say go and do your bit? Don't? Yeah, I think it, you know I know the filly well enough at this stage, and he knows me well enough. So you know, I'd imagine he'll just tell me to get into. A, a nice position somewhere or wherever that is, depending on the pace, and I'll, I'll work with what I've got. But get the stick out of the furlong pole. <laughs> yeah, get get over the, the line in front, hopefully. But yeah, I think but that's quite actually talking about the stick. I mean, that is a slight difference in America, in that presumably you're not having to count as you go around, sort of thing, and think I've given her four reminders or five reminders. Or you're not, but with a filly like with midday, she just she gives you you know what she has and. And she, I had to give her a crack or two the last couple of times she's won because she's just idling and tossing away even in the Verme. She's just barely doing enough. But I think it's fair to say that was probably her best performance because she she was keeping so much to herself that day that she was still running all over them. But no, I, you know, it's, it's just some great differences riding in America, riding here. But I mean, you know, as a jockey and as someone who's perceived to be you know, one of the better jockeys or whatever people say, it, but you, you have to adapt, so. But, you know, barring any nightmare that can happen in any race for anyone, um, and on the basis she gets there in the form she was in on Verme Day, you, you'd think she'd, she'd win, effectively. Yeah, you'd be, you'd be hoping so. But, I mean, you just never know, do you? It's racing and there's been, <clears throat> there's been big surprises, big upsets before, but... That's why racing's so good, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's not going to be in this race, Tom. You're safe. I, I, think. <laughs> well, I, wish, I wish I was as sure as you, man.